Okay, here we have Chris Froome. This is a reference to Chris Froome. Chris says, newfound respect for Chris Froome. Chris Froome's nailed it right on the head. The issues I have had trying to get my disc brake bikes perfect alignment has made me want to toss them. I love my SL6 tarmac direct mount with borers. Equal braking to my Venge disc brake and a simple one minute setup on the disc brake bike. I agree. Oh well, until we go full circle, we deal with it. It's very true. So Chris Froome dropped an absolute truth bomb yesterday in industry shake-up. It's being reported. Cycling news is on there. Bike radars talking about it. James Hung's like cracking a bone over and cycling tips as I have. It's fantastic to see Chris Froome just so transparent, so alpha. Chris Froome flexing the alphaness just by saying, hey, these disc brakes are bogus. What are we doing? We don't need disc brakes, you know? So it's just the Chris Froome has been polite about it and he's professional, but he's just been totally real honest, which is so rare in, in pro sport today, you know, because of sponsorship pressures. Fair enough. Anyway, Walrus Rider, all pro mechanics hate disc brake bikes. 100%, 100%. Um, it's just more work for them. Same with internal cable routing for sure. I mean, I work on bikes, but disc brake bikes, hydro, I'm like, nah, so, so no thanks. Um, mountain bike, okay, but road, it's just like, they're so finicky. So with internal cable routing, that, that's just pretty easy, straightforward. But yeah, no, all the world to mechanics I talk to, eyes rolling, hating it. And people are like, oh, get it on camera, get it on red. That's just like walking up to someone who's screaming on the ground with a broken leg. And, and then you go, um... Do you mind if I do a quick interview? Are you in pain? Does that actually hurt? It's like, what are you doing? You're rubbing salt in the wound. You wouldn't do that. Um, obviously, mechanics aren't allowed to talk about it publicly. Chris Froome is the alpha dog. Chris Froome is the top dog of cycling, at the alpha alpha, especially, you know, I mean, you got Peter Sagan, very, very marketable, but Chris Froome, bam. He's just, he's just, he's, you know, personified his alpha position by saying what he really feels. The French lobster, Colin Rafaste, laughed my emos. Uh, his verbal and non-verbal language clearly says, I think it clearly sucks. You know it does. Everybody does. But we're all going to pretend it's not that shitty and there's room for improvement just for the fun. At you, as you point, I appreciate his ratio of popularity. I don't give a shite. I'm going to be myself. Always have been one underrated aspect. of That's right. You know, people... Yeah, I love it, Chris Froome, though, man. He's just he's just really just up in the alpha, man. As his career gets on, he's just up in that alpha. You know, back in the day, he was letting his legs do the talking, and he's done enough of that, and now he's letting his mouth do the talking. He's just he's putting his foot down and saying, hey, look, his disc brakes, we don't need them. They're absolute bogus junk on the road bike. They just, I mean, I love them for my gravel bike. I love them on my road bike. On my gravel bike, I use cable discs just because they're just, like, easy to tune. Mountain bike, you know. They're just for road racing, man. I mean, these these... Elite road level road racers don't need disc brakes. These athletes are manic over every gram. Pretty much every pro cyclist has some sort of eating disorder. Literally, you know, literally. If they don't, it's close to that. SJ says disc represents progress and it feeds into marketing and bike turnover 100%. Maintenance and replacement parts equals dollars. Also fuels the prestige chasing barrister fap culture in the current weekend warrior biking zeitgeist. That is very true. Um, SJ is over there from USA so he sees it as well I'm actually riding my bike up Norton Summit with this video and there's a few disc brakes I'm cruising doing about 15 minutes just doing a bit of tempo work on my rim brake bike and uh, so yeah you, you, you see it a lot you see the barristers on the disc brake bikes and it's just it's very very cycling's a very very wanky sport um, I love it but it has become very very pretentious you got the map and the Rafa jerseys and the you know the twenty thousand dollar bikes, the ten thousand dollar bikes, etc. And hey, I've, I've used some of that stuff as well. But in general, man, it's it's very clicky, and the disc brake is just one extra click <laughs> on the road scene. But hey, if you want disc brake bikes, and no hate for me, I'm just saying my opinions here. I've avoided disc brakes until a week ago. I had high expectations of how long the resin pads would survive, but my god, they are shite. I don't think aero loss and weight gain make much sense. I will downgrade to rims on my next bike, 100%. You know what I mean? As a disc brake bike, I'm passing. It's just, I mean, whenever I'm in the bunch and I see a disc brake bike in front of me, I'm like, this person has to work a little bit harder to do the same given watts, you know? Just a little bit harder, you know? A little bit harder. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. But I just love Chris Froome, how he's just been so transparent about it. I'm just still... I'm still coming down from that buzz. It's like, wow, man, is, is this this is 2021. This is a good start. This is probably one of the best starts for 2020. The disc brake bikes and passes on there. This is one of the best things ever, you know, in cycling I've ever seen. Just 
a pro rider just saying, matter of fact, how it is. Daryl Unleashed says, let's just admit it, disc brakes is too much for road bike. Leave it to the MTB guys. It's, why do we need disc brake bikes for? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, granted, if you're living in UK, um, for sure, disc brakes, I would run, uh, I'd run disc brake bikes. I'd, I'd, if I lived in the UK, I'd run a gravel bike. Yeah, I'd run a gravel bike with fat tires and fenders and disc brakes. I would, there's no doubt about it. But I don't live in the UK, and I wouldn't live in the UK longer than the summer, you know? And so I just love my rim. I love my rim job. You know, here in Adelaide, you know, rims are, rims are popular and uh, it's just dry. If I lived in the USA, it'd probably be California or the Carolinas where it's relatively dry. I'd be running rims. Even in Thailand, I'd be running rims. You know, like I've got a lot of bikes, and every year I go to Thailand, you know, I've, I've taken a, bin brake bike, a disc brake bike there before, but I'm like, eh, I want, I want, I want grams to be saved. So I'm going to go to Thailand now and just take my rim brake bike. You know, I take lightweight stuff. Ross says, you called it years ago and are still right. I mean, that is my ego saying, yeah, I told you so. But my goal here is just to help people. It's not to say, hey, look, I was right. I mean, that's a part of it. But I just, you know, I see the disc brake bikes. I see the noobs buying them, thinking they're better. And then they have rubbing rotors or the rotors warp or they go to their bike shop and then the bike mechanics just like, oh my God, you know, this guy's come back again or this girl's come back again. And it's just, you know, disc brakes, disc brakes, rim brakes, disc brakes. So the, the, the trend is coming on strong. So then you go into the shop, you've got your disc brakes rubbing and you don't understand that's part of disc brakes. They're going to rub, man. Disc brakes rub. Oh, if you set them up correctly, they don't. No, they do. They do. And anyone who says otherwise... I can get you a job as a world tour mechanic. If there's not a single world tour mechanic out there who can set up disc brake bikes 100%, there isn't. There isn't. So if you think you can, send me a DM. I'll send you some. Uh, I'll send you an email out to a few teams and we'll get you a job. Even you could get a job at Shimano because not even Shimano reps can do it. Not even the SRAM reps can do it. All right. So if they can't do it, man, you must be. This must be next level god mechanic if you can do it. Diogo Lopez, your videos back in 2013, 2014 made me a fan of Chris Froome. Proud, proud to be a Froome fan. Rim break lives matter. That's 100%. You know, I think Chris Froome, for me, has been very helpful. He uses the stages power meter. He's promoting the, the massive refined sugar intake with those SIS commercials. He's he's spinning to win. Chris Froome, and now he's doing rim break lives matter. Chris Froome makes my job a lot easier. You know, so I'm a fan as well. It's uh, Chris Froome. He's, he just makes my life a lot easier when all these people say, "Oh, spinning's bad," and then they see Chris Froome just lighting it up and destroying the entire peloton with his vegan egg whisk legs, cadence style. This is end of the discussion. It's end of the discussion. Even Valverde's changed his pedaling style because of Chris Froome. I mean, yeah, Chris Froome's definitely he's he's stamped his feet very well. Uh, Jahabal says you're up against big money, Harley. Hang in there. You're awesome. Road discs are obviously unnecessarily complex, heavy, and expensive. That's very true. Thanks for support. Unnecessarily complex. I mean, the faffing around with road hydro disc is insane. You know what I mean? Now, a lot of people say, my, my discs don't rub. Your hearing's probably not so good, or you're not riding as hard as these guys do, or you don't put out much power. You know, so if you put out a lot of power, you, you have more flex there. And, and, and a rubbing rotor, how much do you watts does it lose? One, two, three, four, five, ten. Who knows? But every watt matters. That's why you see people using these ceramic speed pulleys and waxing your chain with squirt lube and stuff like that. So, and they are heavier. They're definitely heavier. Someone's George Hincapie or Lance Armstrong says a couple of gels or a gel, it's a kilo to half a kilo to one point two kilos extra weight. Rims, rotors, cables, housings, the faff, the frame fork, extra the spokes. It's just extra less error as well pedaling raw rim brakes for road bikes discs for mountain bikes sorted that's so true I love my disc brakes on my mountain bike hydro you know I make stiaras they sometimes they rub sometimes they don't but when they, when they rub I don't really care too much because on the mountain bike I want that really really good braking I've got a big fat tire on my mountain bike a 2, two inch tire 2.2 and I love having that super control I love braking traction you know, skidding around the corners, just I love it. On the road bike, I'm running 25 mil tires because I do like you know, I like speed. And you know, having disc brakes with that on a wet road like today, it's dangerous because you your 25 mil tire doesn't have much traction there. You know, or has you know 25 mil traction. That's what it has. So having a disc brake, grabbing that, 
25 mil contact patch on the road under wet conditions is very, very dangerous. And because rim disc brakes are so inconsistent, like they might grab, they might not, you know, or they'll grab hard or they grab semi hard, having that on a 25 mil tire is just bad news, man. It's bad news. That's why we saw a lot of crashes in the Tour de France last year. We had some like soap on the road. And guys were, you know, grabbing their disc brake bikes and then the rotors were starting to warp up or the calipers were going in more. So then they grab a little bit, which worked in the last descent, but this descent, no, no, no. It's ditch, the conditions have changed, you know. So the conditions have changed in terms of the rim, the, the, the so the caliper going in. So now you grab, you know, an eighth of a brake and it goes in more than you're used to. And then all of a sudden the rear wheel grabs, locks up, and you're sliding. Lopez doing that Superman slide into that pole. So lucky he wasn't hurt. I mean, his bike got snapped in half, but that doesn't matter because the World Tour riders just get handed another one. But imagine how that could have been so dangerous, man. That could have been so dangerous. I mean, pro cycling is so dangerous. Why are we making it even more dangerous? Clark S. says, I can't believe how disc brakes has triggered in the triathlon. Absolutely insane and dumb. The amount of triathletes have written to me over the last year saying, Harley, I can't believe I didn't take your advice. I flew all this way. Uh, my cable, my housing leaked or the rotor got oil on it or something happened or I bent my rotor and then I'm running around like a turkey, you know, with its with its uh, tofurkey head chopped off and I'm just trying to find a spare rotor or, or some tools to straighten it out and, you know, I should be just relaxing and doing a recovery spin and, and now I'm jailed around all these different bike shops and a rental car trying to find a, someone could fix my brakes but other people got the same problem and the bike shops are booked out and it's all this stress and anxiety and... Eh. Disc brakes on triathlon, that is just, man, triathletes are like, I like how open-minded they can be, but man, they, they triathletes get scammed, it's not scam, but like finessed, <laughs> hardcore, man, it's so easy to floss a triathlete, I don't know why, but yeah, Froomey, love for Froomey, to come out and state something like this is massive, true champ and nice bloke, I agree, Chris Froome, I think he's going to open the floodgates for other riders to say, hey, you know what, we don't like these disc brake things, man. These disc brakes are sh -sh -sh shite for us, our road racing um, desires, our needs. Slow wheel changes, rubbing rotors, inconsistent braking, extra work and stress for the mechanics. I mean, it's, it's bad enough as it is, you know? And now that now they've got the anxiety, before you could just do a wheel change back in the car, now you've got to take a freaking whole bike off the roof, make sure it's the right one, you know? And, and then, oh, it's just so much faff, man. So much faff. You can't get... A spare wheel from your team, mate. Unless he's got a freaking power drill. <laughs> what next? We're going to have bloody Makita drills. You know, you have domestics pulling a Makita drill out to uh, do a wheel change to someone. We Lay Up Lay says, all three Grand Tours of 2020 was one of the rim brake bike. That's 100%. A disc brake can still win a stage. There's no doubt about that, all right? One day races, it's not always fittest person wins. Often it's the early break or it's just a bit of tactics and it's a bit of luck. One day racing isn't as critical as the stage race. The stage race, things really add up. Your blood volume adds up more. Your glycogen petitioning, your, you know, your, your contractile tissue versus your body fat, your, your, your brakes rubbing or not, your bike weight, all these things add up way more in a stage race than a one day race. Because right? there's, there's a lot of variables that can, you know, like add up and become a catalyst for a shift in the GC, you know, luck and bad luck involved there. So it's, you know, we've got all the stage races, Tour de France, Velta, Giro, one on the rim brake bike last year in 2020. I mean, obviously it's going to change this year because a lot of teams are switching over to, uh, not switching over, they're being forced to ride this brake bike. Jungmo, also, I don't really like the look on the disc brake bike. Feels less of a bike whenever I see it. Um, so true, so true, you know, it's it's a gravel bike look. For me, having skinny tires and disc brake rotors, it just, <laughs> it just doesn't, it doesn't look right, man. It doesn't look right. That's just my opinion. We're just talking about aesthetics here, which doesn't really mean much in, in, the, in the performance scheme of things. But cycling is an aesthetic sport. As you've seen me passing all these people out here, you know, some people take the, the fashion wheels full on and the $400 jerseys and the $300 Knicks and the... Yeah, you know, seven of shoes and all this, all this kerfaffles, and they ride it, you know, 120 watts or whatever, and that's fine. It better be out on the bike than not on the bike. Um, but as we can see here, Adelaide, we see if you look at the bikes we're passing here, there's a disc brake bike there. We're seeing, 
you know, I'm seeing every ride every week or so more and more disc brake bikes, you know, more and more disc brake bikes. Soon, there won't be much rim out there. I know Factor, uh, Rob, has posted on, he sells about 90% uh, disc, 10% rim. More disc there. And uh, that's the trend. That's the trend right now. But I think it's going to flip around long term. It'll flip around long term because people like Chris Froome will start to be more vocal. And, and Chris Froome's the alpha. And when you're the alpha, people copy the alpha because the alpha's given permission to say, hey, look, this is what the deal is. So, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching what's going to happen as a progression over the next few months and years because of Chris Froome's tra- one little YouTube video yesterday, which has gone absolutely viral. Everyone's talking about it. You know, that's just, wow. Well, I, I can't, uh, you know, I can't comprehend how exciting this is. You know, for the for the future, just it's it's trippy, man. If you just don't have this level of transparency like that. Chris Froome edited that video. He filmed that video himself, and he uploaded it to his YouTube channel. All right? This wasn't like he wasn't drunk. He wasn't like under pressure. He's just like just telling you what I really think. Leonard West, exactly. You can't be sure the discs aren't rubbing against the piston, slowing you down. You need to be 100% sure nothing's slowing you down, especially when you don't have a professional mechanic cleaning your bike all the time. So rims are still king. It is so true. Even if you do have a professional mechanic, the pros, the pro riders, the world tour teams have the best, the very, very best mechanics out there. They have support from SRAM and Shimano Tech Crew, Campag Tech Crew. They have all the tech crew, right? There's so much money that goes into these and effort and like you got to get this right, and they still, they still, just have massive amount of stress and anxiety over the high android disc road bikes. Uh, even with the best support you can get, the best support money can buy. And look what Team Sky did, you know, the big budget team. What do they do? They're like disc brakes, man. Are you serious? <laughs> Are we racing mountain bikes? Is this a gravel bike race? You can get your disc brakes on your road bike and you can shove them. That's what, that's what Team Sky's done. Um, and good on them. You know, this is so smart. I can't believe we live in such a world where people are so dumb. Is it dumb the right word? Or is it like they want to follow the crowd? Are they sheeple? Sorry, sheep. What's the word? Naive? Ignorant? Not paying attention? Dumb. What is the word where people believe the marketing over the real voices out there? What What is that world? What is that reality? You know, where people just want to follow that social narrative. Well, the logic says this, the rational logic says this, but the marketing says this. And that specialized advert that they paid Peter Sagan to do says, this looks cool and fun. Maybe this is the way to go. I'm going to try it out. My friends are doing it. My friends don't wear gloves. Like, yeah, I mean, you see a lot of cyclists don't wear gloves. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you must not have no big crash shit if you don't wear gloves. Or a helmet. You haven't had a big crash shit. Or you see cyclists smashing downhill so fast. I'm like, dude, have you seen a brain smash in the road? I have. I've seen someone die in front of me, take their last breath. It's it's very haunting. You know, it, it's a definitely wake-up call. Um, I, I, I tell people, you have two lives. Men and women have two lives. Humans have two lives. Your second life starts when you realize you only have one life and you need to look after it. You need to have enough carbohydrates and you need to pay attention to the roads, etc. That's when your real life starts. Right? It is crazy out there. Um, this disc break stuff going on. I'm looking forward to it. We'll do a follow-up video. Leave your comments down below. Thanks for the support.